Hello, disciples, and welcome to another episode of Imagine With Me. An opportunity that I have to have exciting conversations with creative and innovative leaders uh, across the life of the church. Today, I'm pleased to welcome uh, the Reverend Allison Ruari, who is Associate Minister at the Vine Street Christian Church in Nashville, Tennessee, and also a member of the General Board and the General Board's Governance Committee. Welcome, Allison. Hello. Hi, it's, Terry. Thank you it's so much good, for it's having me. It's good to see you. It, it's yeah. not like we never see each other, but it's, <laughs> good to, it's good to see you. And we're in a lot of meetings together. We um, sure are. With the Governance Committee and uh, the General Board. And I'm, I'm delighted uh, that you're here uh, to talk about uh, what's happening with w what we're now calling the Covenant Project. Yeah. Uh, we've been having town halls and we're really excited about that. But uh, you're a local pastor there in Nashville, Tennessee, and you're a member of the General Board. So we wanted to get your thoughts on what's happening from that perspective. But before we get into the conversation, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your ministry. And you got two sweet little boys and your ministry at Vine Street. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I have been at Vine Street Christian Church for the past three and a half years as their associate. It started out as a, a primary focus on children, youth, and their families, and COVID has kind of changed that. And so like many congregations, uh, it's just kind of get to work and get things done as needed. So the, you know, that last tagline is other duties as necessary. <laughs> so I do a little bit of everything. This summer, my senior minister, Thomas Kleinert, is on sabbatical. So I've kind of dipped my toe into what it would feel like and look like to be a senior pastor. But it has been uh, wonderful and delightful to, to be at a church that is 200 years old um, mm -hmm. and proudly disciples. So um, I'm, I'm glad to be uh, serving Vine Street Christian Church and the wider church by being on general board. Awesome. Awesome. And we're, we're delighted uh, to have you in that role. Um, you know, the, the governance committee of the general board um, has been working and thinking about these things really since April of 2018. And we had a, a retreat in September of 2019, right after General Assembly. And you've been part of that work really uh, from the beginning. So from your perspective, talk a little bit about the origins of, of, of what is now called the Covenant Project. And, and from your perspective, what we've been trying to do and how we got started with it. Yeah, so so like you mentioned, 2018, it really feels like this work started forever ago. And, you know, there have been different conversations over the years that the current structures of our wider church um, weren't really serving the mission that we wanted to live out, nor was it really giving us the freedom and the ability to be the church who we say we are. So we claim our identity as a movement for wholeness and seek to be an anti-racist, pro-reconciling church. Um, and so the hope is that these structures and these processes will allow us to be that church who we say we are. So like you mentioned in 2019, there was a group that gathered and discerned that the purpose of our work together would be to align the design of the Christian church, Disciples of Christ, with God's design for the church and to claim the power and potential of covenant. So the first phase, I guess you could call it, was the release of our covenant education curriculum last year. And that was the, the goal was to really get folks talking about um, engaging with one another about that theological foundation of covenant. And so while that was happening and, you know, it still continues to happen, you can find that online. Um, <laughs> and it is a wonderful resource for sermons and small groups online and in person. There was another group, another subcommittee that uh, looked at the current design to see where we might modify our processes and procedures to clarify how we make decisions in the 21st century. So this covenant project helps us live out who we say we are in really visible ways. Well, you mentioned before in previous Imagined With Me's that uh, the theological foundation of covenant is meaningful and it's rich and it's compelling, it's not coercive, and it opens us up to the possibility of receiving and sharing the transformative mm -hmm. and liberative love of God that we know through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and through the power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. 
So because of covenant and this theological concept was, is woven throughout the design, we can more fully recognize ourselves and individuals uh, as co and congregations as part of that movement for wholeness. And because of covenant, we can engage in the work that is anti-racist and pro-reconciling. And because of covenant, we can praise God for the gifts we have been given and are free to imagine yeah. new ways of being in the world. It's all rooted in covenant and the recognition of our identities as beloved and in relationship with God and with one another. Amen. You just preached that thing, Reverend Allison. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I think that at its heart, I think that is what continues to excite me that there is, uh, this isn't just moving the boxes around on the page. This is really a way that uh, we believe will allow us to live into being the church we say we are. Um, and there's so many um, powerful ways when we talk with people who are not disciples, we've had consultants work with the church, uh, with communications they are like, wow, you guys are the real deal. You're the, you're the thing people are looking for. And um, we've got to learn to talk about that better. But um, Bill Roseheim, uh, regional minister in greater Kansas City, uh, always makes note Terry, are there any other denominations who are like doing this level of engagement um, and allowing for this level of engagement? And, and I really don't think there are uh, anything that, that's quite similar. But why don't we talk about some of the major changes yeah. um, that are being discussed and, and tell us why you think they're important. We're having town halls to talk about it, but, but from your perspective, let, let's run through those changes and talk about why they're important. Yeah, so, so the two major changes are one through general assembly meeting more often and then general board in terms of it's a real transformation of how general board does its work and what its work is mm -hmm. so i'm third generation disciples clergy my first plane ride was to when i was six weeks old to general assembly mm -hmm. and our family vacations were planned around general dis assemblies i distinctly remember going around the exhibit hall as a child and teen with my brothers to try and see who could get the most swag. <laughs> and I have very fond memories of General Assembly. And as an adult, I have an extreme appreciation for the ways that folks were able to connect uh, pre-cell phones. So there was this massive energy around bulletin boards to see if you can see boards. who was there um, and shouts of excitement from folks who hadn't seen each other or really even talked to each other in years. Now. Like I said, I love General Assembly, uh, but as I have attended, and I've attended, the Louisville will be my 13th General Assembly, and I am 34 years old. Um, mm -hmm. so I've, I've also noticed a lot of shifts. So um, one is just kind of a, a, a technological thing. People have cell phones, so there isn't that general communal sense of who's here. You just, you know who your people are, and you text them, and you say, hey, where do you want to meet after mm -hmm. worship? Mm -hmm. um, in, but during business sessions, especially, uh, I've noticed that conversation and debate around resolutions have become less robust. Mm -hmm. Votes have become less contentious and mm -hmm. votes, uh, folks who are in the minority, uh, I've heard vocalized frustration over not being heard or questioned what the point of them being there was in voting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard folks question safety. It's like, well, if I speak up and disagree, will it be safe for me? Will I still be welcomed here? This is, and this is coming from seminarians and college students mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who, who helped usher with the business sessions. And hearing those, those questions of safety and those questions of, of frustration really hurt my heart because it really is antithetical to who we say we are. Right, right. We say that everyone is welcome, but the way that we do business currently doesn't fully reflect that. And you can also see that in terms of engagement and participation, it's harder to get people there. And we can talk about cost and finance and whatever, but at, at the crux of it, it is, I don't know if I will be welcome here because of what I believe. And because we proclaim to be fully welcoming and theologically diverse, that, that sense of winners and losers and these up down votes mm -hmm. really hurts our sense of unity and connection. 
So I'm really excited about the General Assembly's focus on dialogue and discernment, not every other year, but really throughout three years. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about opportunities for uh, folks to connect in ways that develop trust as a group and in spaces that allow everyone to come together as they are and also strengthen connections uh, among local, regional, and general, general manifestations of the denomination. I'm excited about the possibility of uh, transformative community conversations and the work of the Church Narrative Project to help folks really come to the table and be able to fully mm -hmm. listen to folks who don't look like or sound like them or even speak the same language that they are, that mm -hmm. they do. and the opportunity to really have delegates be fully prepared uh, for these gatherings so that folks really know what's in those resolutions right. so that they can they can ask thoughtful and reflective questions that they have time to speak and clarify what their concerns are. So on General Assembly, I, I'm really excited about that opportunity. On General Board, so I've been on General Board for what feels like forever. Um, and that's been through a variety of weird things, including the pandemic. Um, but it really wasn't until I was three or four years onto being general board that I really understood the process of submitting a resolution. Mm -hmm. The process and structure felt cumbersome and not at all intuitive. And it felt very insidery, like even, even going through and knowing what language to Google, what questions to ask. Mm -hmm, and I, mm -hmm. I, I know that it, it wasn't at all intuitive of how to do that. And then when we got to general board, it felt like we were just wordsmithing resolutions and that wasn't really moving the general board forward. It didn't give space and opportunity for the general board to do work in terms of vision casting and modeling language and and opportunities of listening and conversation. And so the opportunity to for general board to really be intentional about recognizing and celebrating the gifts of the denomination, um, as well as clarifying their role and responsibility of what it means for us to do mission, how, how we can be good stewards of our resources and funding that so that we really can continue to be that church that we say that we are. So we can really live out that movement for wholeness in tangible and visible ways is yeah. really, is really exciting to me. Yeah. Um, and, and the fact, you know, in March, 2020, many churches were forced to do church in new ways out of necessity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that we have this opportunity to 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 reach out and to say we want to hear from you we want people to be engaged about this process we don't want anyone to be surprised about these possible changes mm -hmm. and really be intentional about change uh, the the possibility of of changing mm -hmm. these structures so that it really does work for who we are in 2022 and beyond is mm -hmm. really exciting for me i i think um i so agree with you i think the the most exciting part of this for me is this level of congregational engagement, which, which means that the General Assembly, as much as we love those every two-year gatherings, the in-person gathering will be every three years. But in the meantime, uh, there will be opportunities for virtual gatherings of uh, you know, each church having three delegates and, and being able to, every meeting, uh, one of the things I think I've learned from the town halls is that uh, people think, oh, are you just going to take the General Assembly and put it online for four days on the off years? No, no. Uh, those those meetings will really be about learning, discussing, discerning, um, as you say, and, and working with the general board, right, to identify um, when the church needs to take action. And the general board won't have to wait for three years to get to the General Assembly because the General right. Assembly is always meeting and right. theoretically always be in session. Absolutely. Um, so, so those as a local pastor, how do you think uh, congregations will respond to this this unique opportunity? My hope is that it will really strengthen our identity as disciples. So the majority of my congregation was not raised disciples. I'm very much in the minority that mm -hmm. I was born into this movement. And so it has 
it's been a lot of work to really help bring along many folks in my congregations to say, this is who we are. This is what we believe. And this is what it looks like. It might Mm -hmm. change in terms of context uh, and in terms of local congregations, but as a as a member of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, here are the things that we hold to be foundational. These are what we claim to be as our identity markers, um, that what make us unique. And so it, you know, this way to, to help encourage um, and identify uh, leaders who are excited about what Vine Street is doing and what they want to know more about what the wider church is doing and how we are, how we are connected um, is really an exciting possibility. Yeah, I, I, th- I think the opportunity to have people continuously engaged. We, as I've traveled across the church for the last five years, one of the things, and and was we have new regional ministers in places. One of the things they're finding is that people aren't as connected Mm-mm. or as familiar with how the church, with the even the regional church or the wider church is, as they, uh, in terms of how it functions, and, and so they assume some things incorrectly. And and I know that um, one of the things that we hope this will do is to strengthen those covenantal bonds. And so people actually understand and then can participate that the general board is not something that just sits at a far off, right? Right. And and hands down edicts. This will be the kind of general board that's more of a working board um, and not just comprised of representatives that are sent uh, sort of blindly from each of the general and regional ministries, but people Um, that will be sourced from across the life of the church, ensuring representation from each region, Mm -hmm. but looking for specific skill sets, right? That we, that we need so that we can empower that board um, to not just meet once a year and review and refer things on, but to be thinking about the life of the church, to be thinking about our mission priorities, hearing from congregations on a Mm -hmm. regular basis, directly, right? Directly. And using that input to set priorities and, and make important decisions. So I, it, it's hard to imagine um, that we have done things any other way when we think about the, the possibilities, I think, for, for, for what's possible there in terms of a congregational involvement and people really understanding the potential that we have Absolutely. Uh, and the work, the kind of ministry that, that we can do together. Um, I, I just think that's just... Uh, at the heart of it, that congregational engagement. You know, you've you've said, and I'm so excited to hear you say, being the church we say we are, you know, that's that's something that I, we don't need to change our, our identity statement. We have priorities that are valuable. We just got to do this, right? We right. got to live into this. And, and so you've said a little bit about it, but how do you think this helps us to be um, an anti-racist, pro-reconciling church, a church that welcomes all to the table? Say a little bit more about that again as we prepare to close yeah so so with with this covenant project you know it it's kind of an all-in type thing um and so it one can't work without the other so so beyond trainings it really is developing a habit a language um and a a way of being um Mm -hmm. and so you know when we, we call when we call it the covenant project you know, it's, it's kind of a fun play on words. Um, so it's a group project where, you know, multiple people c- collaborate and work together towards a common goal, that goal being an anti-racist pro-reconciling church um, and a movement for wholeness. And it's, it's, work, it's helping us reclaim the power and potential of, of covenant and building those connections in ways that people can really thrive and flourish. And as you know, the sin of racism does not allow anybody to flourish fully. And so right. to, to, to collaborate and work together helps us recognize, you know, the power of covenant that we are bound together by God's covenant of love. And mm-hmm. when to borrow Paul's uh, metaphor of the body, when one part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers. And so, you know, there's the project, there's the noun part, but there's also, you know, to project is a verb. And so to mm-hmm. project covenant means that we are grounding ourselves in a way that recognizes the importance of our relationship with God and with one another. And because of that, we are able to live out 
uh, shared narrative that includes liberation and flourishing for all people. So mm -hmm. when we talk about what it means to be an anti-racist pro-reconciling church, it really is less about trainings and more about living into who Amen. we say we are as a movement for wholeness. Right. Amen. Amen. And I, I think that's a, a, a great place to, to end our conversation. Um, I, I hope that people will take the opportunity to attend. We're doing town halls on a regular basis between now and the end of September, and there will be a link to that schedule. You could just go to disciples.org slash covenant hyphen project. There's more information about the specific changes to the general board and general assembly that we've been talking about. Um, so I hope uh, as you're watching this, you'll be, you, you will have been inspired by, um, by uh, Allison's passion and excitement about this as well. Uh, I, I don't want to be the only one who's excited. <laughs> and I know there's so many others and, and we're feeling the energy around discussing the changes because it really does. It's not just about changing some processes. It's about a way of being uh, the church that, that we say we are. So thank you so much, Allison, uh, not only for today, but for all your work over the past few years as we've all um, met and discerned and prayed and, and thought through um, how what we might offer to the church as uh, this committee of the general board. And so I'm really excited that the conversation is now really uh, going churchwide. Uh, and we'll have some feedback to give to the administrative committee in October and more feedback. So there'll be another round of, of conversations as we lead up to General Assembly. So thank you uh, thank for your you good work, both at Vine Street and uh, with the General Church. We're, we're just grateful to have you as a partner in ministry. Well, it's my honor to, to serve in this way and to um, accompany folks along this journey and process. Thanks so much, Allison. Thank you. Well, disciples, there you have it. Another episode of Imagine With Me. I do hope that you will go to disciples.org slash covenant hyphen project and get the schedule for town halls where we'll be presenting these changes that are being um, presented uh, to the whole church. And as Allison said, the covenant project is, is a way of being a church together, not just uh, processes or rules or language that we follow, but really a way that we can ensure all voices and all perspectives are engaged uh, with discerning and making decisions in the life of our church. So we hope that you'll take the time to attend one of these town halls and you can get more information again at disciples.org slash covenant hyphen project. Thank you again for your time as we together imagine who we must be as a new church uh, for a new world. I'm grateful to God and my confidence remains in the one who has begun this good work, that God will be the one who completes it. So thank you again. And remember that God loves you. And so do 